What's up, beautiful people? Happy, happy Wednesday. Welcome to another Wealthy Wednesday edition of the Finance Rubble Show. The Finance Rubble Show is a show all about elevating the financial IQ of the black community. So every Wednesday, we talk about money, stocks, taxes, real estate, insurance, anything about money we talk about. It's fair game here. Um, I've been in the business for over 20 years between accounting, financial advising, Wall Street investing. It's not much I haven't seen, and that's not a brag or a humble brag. It's just stating the facts. So every week I come, I hang out with you guys. We have fun. We chop it up, talk about some fun things. I think all things money are fun, and uh, hopefully I get to instill a couple of gems in you. Relationship flow, how are you? Um, everybody knows I'm broadcasting live on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook all at the same damn time. So... Um, don't be shy. Don't be bashful. Throw your question in the comments. I mean, if you're on IG, throw your question in the uh, question box and we can get at it. Today is the first day of July. First day of the second half of the year. First day of the third quarter of the year. So for all of you that have got goals, that's on the ball, that's ready to get things going. We get halftime right now. All right. So what y'all doing? What's the goals for the next quarter? What's the goals for the next half of the year? What's the goals for the entire year? So I want to talk about a couple things. Um, I know today is the relationship. I mean, excuse me. I know today is the question day, question Q&A day, right? Big homie 716, how are you? But I want to talk a little bit about relationships before we get into before we get into that. Right, while you're coming in, while you're putting your questions, I um, I want to talk about a few things. Got a couple of accolades. So, a couple of days ago, I did a live where I showed some of the shenanigans of people trying to defraud people out of their money, as in regards and in regards to pandemic, uh, quote unquote, pandemic stimulus money. Somebody hit my inbox and said, literally the next day, somebody tried to hit their mom with that same old game. And as a result of watching my lives, they were able to tell their mom not to do it. All right, so listen, anybody asked them for two stacks, I heard two stacks in Philly, I heard like three stacks in Mississippi, I've heard like five grand in Chicago, and that's the fees that people are charging folks to do EIDLs and PPP loans and everything else. So anytime somebody is asking you to do something like that, it's whack. Um, I, I got several clients that I've helped with EIDL, didn't charge them a penny, actually, wouldn't charge them anywhere near $2,000. That's highway robbery. I mean, some of the people that are getting these EIDL loans are only getting $10,000. So if you're getting two grand and they're getting 10 grand, you're getting 20%. How is that fair? How is that equitable? Right? So listen, don't fall for the okie doke. Also, been getting questions, comments, and concerns about the Susu remix or the Blooming Wheel or some other new name or whatever is the new flavor of the month for the hustlers and scammers out there. Listen, you get it how you live it. I ain't mad at that, but my folks, my tribe, my people, I want y'all to be on your toes and on your P's and Q's for that. Um, avoid those as well, right? They're asking you to put up a couple hundred bucks, work your way to the middle, and to these these I didn't even take a whole lot of time to understand it, but I know people are calling it a susu. I wouldn't do those either. It, it, avoid those at all costs. Um, again, that's another scam. Uh, Mr. Dave Anderson, the business bully. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Yeah, they're charging people two grand to do EIDL paperwork. Uh, it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. But um, as we come on, as we answer questions, as I answer questions, um, I want to talk about relationships a little bit. Y'all see Jada and Will getting dragged, right? For whatever reason. I don't know if August I've seen it, telling the truth or not. I know y'all seen it, so I ain't going to get into the details. But I want y'all to think about this, right? The stuff that we spread in our community about our people, about our black folks, they do the same stuff in other communities. It just doesn't get highlighted. Warren Buffett, anybody know that name? Did you know his wife had an extramarital affair? Several of them. Did you know his wife actually found 
his new wife or his new girlfriend at the time before she passed and then his wife passed and then they got married. I don't see how that's any different than Will and Jadis. So I'll say this marriage is more than more than sex folks. I'm not condoning what they do because I don't know what they do. Right. But I know we might as well stop minding other people's business. Stick to our own business, mind our own business, mind our own money, mind our own relationships. Um, I just find it, I just find it really interesting that we're so intrigued about other people's relationships, where a lot of our relationships just keeping it funky are shitty. But you know, I just calling it like I see it. Just calling it like I see it. Now, I've been talking a lot about relationships for um for about a week now, a couple of days. The other day, I put a personal post on my Facebook page. The post asked a question. The question was, and I'll show it to you in a minute. I'll show it to you in a minute. The question was, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where are we going? Give me two seconds. Two seconds. Uh, da, 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 da. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh man, it's far down. I must have been getting busy posting this week. The, 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 the question goes something like this as I find it, right? Your rent is $1,500. Your utilities are $350. How much should the man pay? Again, your rent is $1,500. Your utilities are $350. How much should the man pay? What do y'all think about that question? All right, so let me all right, let me read it right. Let me read it right. You live together. Rent equals fifteen hundred dollars a month. Utilities equal three hundred and fifty dollars a month. A month. How much should the man pay? Y'all got that? So y'all put y'all comments, y'all thoughts, and uh, y'all thoughts and comments in there on that. All right, I see I got a couple questions on IG. And I know, okay, Robert asked, so we're starting off with the first question, right? And again, as I answer these questions, you guys tell me about the question I just asked. So Robert Redstar asked, what's the best start in real estate as far as educating yourself? So I would say, read every piece of real estate uh, books you can get your hands on. I would also say get a mentor. There's no shortage of people in real estate out here. The question will be is differentiating from the good ones and the scammers. There's a lot of scammers in real estate too, sadly, but that's just the truth. Um, I, you know, so again, I would look to find people who are actively in real estate. Um, I would start to save your money, right? I know you asked about education, but I'm just talking about the process. By the way, Robert, are you talking about real estate investing? Or are you talking about real estate in terms of a residential property where you're going to live with you or your family? I think this is the first time we've ever talked, so I'm not sure about your situation. Da, 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 da. So as we are, we are stock traders. What's up, bro? How you been? I haven't seen you in a while. So, uh, Miss Edith asked what happened with, with Will and Jada. So, August Alcina said that basically he had an affair with Jada with Will's permission. And so, all the interwebs and all the internet and social media uh, is going crazy over that. So, Miss Edith says, I'm glad you speak of relationships. I love the song by Destiny's Child about bringing the slippers to the door. My younger friend said, No. I say I, I'm a person of sacrificing their feelings to ensure. Okay, Robert, you're talking about flips. Okay, coming right back to you. Ensuring a, re a relationship is compromised. They have an open relationship. Well, we don't really know if they have an open relationship. That's speculation. You know, I, I don't know any, and I know people um, that know Will directly. I don't know of anybody directly connected to Will saying they have an open relationship. Not to say that they don't. But how do you really know? One, but also, why do we really care? I don't really care. 
I say do what's best. Okay, so relationship flow says it's not an affair. It's a mutual agreement by all parties. So I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about Will and Jada and not the question I posed. So I posed the question, folks. Come on, come on. Rent, you live together. Rent equals $1,500 a month. Utilities equal $350 a month. How much should the man pay? I guess, I don't know if I've ever heard Monique say that either. But I've had, I've seen people talk about that. But at any rate, Robert Redstar, uh, you're interested in flips. So I would sit down and talk with some flippers. Um, there are some out here. I'm trying to think. Um, I have several real estate clients, some that do flips, some that do um, some that do flips, some that do rentals, some that do wholesales, actually, that do wholesaling deals. Um, and I'm trying to think of one. Look up Eddie Colson. Eddie Colson does. Um, Eddie Colson is a guy out of Baltimore. He and I used to do a show together and he does flips, but he does a lot of wholesaling too. So look up Eddie Colson. Um, he can talk about flips as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of anybody else that I know directly that does flips that's online. I'm sure I'll bring some people online at some point to talk about flipping as well. Everybody's had to try to about flipping and real estate in general. Yeah, they talked about it. I have never seen them say they have an open relationship. I've seen them say they are like partners. Those are two different things. Oh, I'm sorry, relationship flow. You responded to the question earlier. So I must have missed it. Okay, I got you. So it's dumb because there are no two houses that function the same. There's no such, there's no... There's, excuse me, there's so much bias in memes like that. There is bias, um, and I agree. It's dumb, but it, it's a great conversation starter. I also think it highlights on both sides of the aisle the level of misogyny that still exists, um, whether it be man taking care of everything or woman wanting to be taking care of man, because a lot of times men use that to be controlling. Sometimes, not all the time, right? But I've seen several instances of domestic violence where the man paid everything. The woman couldn't leave because they weren't on equal playing grounds. Not to say that a relationship should be about money. However, if you, an old guy told me um, one time, Teddy Pendergrass got us all, he said, effed up. He said, Teddy P, Teddy P got us effed up. He said, Teddy P got us effed up because we all think it's a 50 50 love. Y'all know the song. Um, not talking about 70-30, not 60-40, talking about a 50-50 love, right? He said, that's wrong. He said, both spouses have to bring 100% to the table every day because some days one spouse is only going to be able to bring 90%. Some spouses are only going to be able to bring 80%. And then we talked about money, of course, and he says that goes for everything. He said him and his wife, they all put their money in a pot, they all make decisions and talk about things together and they make decisions together. They're a team. There is no separation. They all bring all of themselves to the table. I know that's not going to sit well with everybody because some people are like, what's mine is mine. And I don't care what you got. Um, I'm too young to be starting over. I'm too young to be dealing with somebody that's broke. Um, so I want to have somebody that's bringing something to the table not mentally, intellectually, but financially. They want to deal with somebody that's bringing something to the table. So I get it. Okay, so Leo Lady just said 1500 Bossman PG said half. How much do two people decide? Uh, Miss Edith, I agree. How much do two people decide? Agree with that. Shelby says whatever works for them. Um, Ms. Edith says people who respect each other will pay bills, buy food, etc. I agree. Like when you're married and, and you want the best for your partner, your spouse, from what I've seen, the most successful relationships, the most successful marriages, they just do what's in the best interest of everybody and they don't argue. They really don't argue about it. Yeah, so, so it's funny relationship flow. Some people don't get what I'm saying 
when I say misogyny, but I'm glad you got it. Um, as Edith says, everyone's relationship is different, different economy. Some may not have the same finances as long as respect and supporting their family. Spouses should develop uh, develop what is mutual, develop mutual sacrifice and decide how they work with communicating and know that when that is imbalanced, so that an intimacy is in their relationship. Shelby says, if my wife was that type, that was that type to expect all, we would not be married today. Amen to that, Shelby. Uh, unions, right, unions, both parties should benefit financially. Yep, 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 yep. And so, right, Miss Edith, I was coming to that. I was going to talk about Jeff Bezos' divorce, right? So Jeff Bezos' divorce was, um, you know, Jeff Bezos is now the officially the richest man in the world. He's actually been the richest man in the world for quite some time. Um, he got a divorce from his wife, McKenzie. She, McKenzie actually helped him build that company. She helped him build Amazon. And it wasn't always called Amazon. They changed their name at a point. But um, they got a divorce. Things wasn't working out. I guess they grew apart for whatever reason. And she got a billion plus dollars, more than several billions. Actually, I don't have the official number. Um, and many people think that once you get a divorce and you pay half, like Eddie Murphy used to say, Eddie, I want half, that the woman is kind of taking advantage of the man, skating off with his bag, skating off with his cash, and it's unfair. But a lot of times we don't think about the other side. Now, in Mackenzie's case, she literally built the company with him. Literally, she worked at Amazon. She uh, left her job to go work with him. They worked at the same job previously. They were both at a hedge fund. Um, she's very smart. And so they got it going. And then they added more on and they added more on and they kept going and kept going and kept going. So, you know, it's it's interesting to see that, right? So now after he paid her a lump sum of money, his stacks fell and he's now back on top. So a lot of y'all saw that I posted that uh, that uh, cover of Jeff Bezos talking about he's now recovered his billions and made like another $176 billion. By the way, most of that is from stock. <laughs> I'm just saying. Some of y'all like to poo-poo my stock. Uh, y'all know I love the markets, but um, it's, it's from stock. It's derived from Amazon, but his ownership in Amazon's. So um, that's interesting. That's interesting. But I always say, you know, if you have, and it's funny because I've had, I've had a lot of tough relationship conversations with my clients. I actually had one today. And the one thing I always go back to, right, is if you got children, think about the children. Always put them first. So many times when we have relationships that go awry, People don't think about the children. They get in their they get in their feelings. They get emo, and they think about what they want. They think about how they're hurt. They don't think about how the children are being hurt, or if they might say it. Their actions don't reflect that they really are caring about their children. So I say, put the children first because they don't deserve any of this. They don't deserve any of the cussing, fussing, fighting. They don't deserve any of that. Um and think about them first and figure out how to co-parent if that's the case. Many of us in our community, the black community, could could um, do be better parents if they learned how to co-parent. And ultimately, a lot of that comes down to them getting therapy. But y'all know our community ain't the biggest on therapy. I, I, I am glad that it's starting to become more mainstream. Relationship flow is on. She is a therapist, Miss Mary May um, is a therapist, so follow her. She is always talking about relationships and how to better them. So, you know, I think I talk a lot about black wealth, right, from the money aspect. But I always say that it's more to wealth than just money, right, because everything relates to money. If you got a jacked up spouse, your chance of getting money is going to be really, really hard. And, you know, again, I just talked to I just talked to a client today that talked about their relationship and then just being sensitive to that situation. I can't go too deep in it, but I will say 
one thing they said, you know, a lot of times when they were under pressure in their business and they had to perform and do certain things, they would always wind up having some type of argument. And the argument would set them off and just they would be in their feelings for, you know, days, weeks, sometimes months at a time. And they weren't able to focus. You know, one of the words they said was they were not able to manifest what they were working on. And I get that because if your energy is directed somewhere else, you're not going to be able to go all in on anything you do, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's a business, whether it's a hobby, it, 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 it'll be hard either way. So, you know, be careful about the spouse you pick, your life partner, the person you journey with in life. Also, once you're in that relationship, I always say be very, very intentional about building a firm foundation and making sure that you continue to strengthen that foundation and grow together. So that's what I have to say about relationships, right? Because if you marry the wrong person or have a serious life engagement with the wrong person, it will kill all your prospects of getting wealthy, right? Because your energy is tied up and you're not being fed. Your spirit's not being fed. Emotionally, emotionally, you're being drained. Financially, a lot of times you are misallocating money because you're not rational a lot of times. So, you know, keep those things in mind. Keep those things in mind. So let's, uh, free bands chop. How are you? Thanks for joining us tonight. All right. So let's, uh, let's see. Quran asked, yeah, the EDIL joint took a couple minutes. Oh, really? I thought it was clear. Did I do a bad job conveying that? Hey, Don Johnson, how you doing? Alethea sharing. They call them susus without knowing what they actually are. Yes, susus can actually be very, very powerful when used properly. By the way, the idea of susu started in West Africa, migrated as our people migrated from Africa, and it wasn't a voluntary migration um, from Africa to the, the Caribbean or the West Indies and ultimately to the United States. You don't see a whole lot of them in the United States. You see more of them in the Caribbean and, and amongst people that directly come from West Africa. But again, usually in a susu, you might have, let's say, seven people. Every week they put money in. Every week somebody kind of pulls it out. So it's kind of like a forced savings type thing. But everybody gets their turn. I know a lot of people who have, who have made money, or I won't say made money, but they got their start to a business through Susu or a house through a Susu. So, you know, that's how it rocks. So Don Johnson says, I pay every bill that comes in my house. Salutes to you, Don. That's what works for you and your family. I applaud you. Okay. So Miss Althea says half. Half. I want half. Karan says my house, everything in one pot. We pay from there. I think that's the best way to do it. Open transparency, everything in one pot, and everybody knows where it is. Y'all can have goals together. Savings goals, retirement goals, business goals, whatever it may be. Big uh big P75, how are you? Uh da, 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 da. so Lynette, how are you, Lynette? She says, Who cares about Will and Jada? Yeah, but that's what's on the people's minds today. If the couple isn't married, they should pay half of all household expenses. Okay, I hear you. As long as it gets done, it doesn't matter who does it. The end goal is that everybody everything gets paid and both parties are financially stable together. Hey man. Christopher Allen says 925. Hey, Tara, how you doing? You've been rocking with me almost every day this week. I appreciate you. All right, you laughing at me again. You're always laughing at me. All right, uh, so Miss uh, Miss Richards says, God bless Mr. Johnson. I'm not sure what that's about. Tara Nicole says you need great communication for that. Yeah, you do. Um, that should always be what you strive to do in any, re any relationship. Any relationship that you value, um, you should strive for great communication. A lot of times people just want to know how to get the bag. I always tell them develop great relationships. They don't like that answer. They feel it's too slow. <laughs> oh, Tara, I appreciate you as well. Thank you. 
So Miss Edith says, Big Mama said three accounts, your account, our account, and the Bills account. <laughs> so what's hers is hers, and what's yours is hers. I get you. I see the lingo. I see it. Okay, Mr. Allen is your invited guest. All right, well, welcome, Mr. Allen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Mr. Johnson pays all of his household bills. God bless him. Oh, right, right. Oh, y'all, y'all like that, huh? <laughs> y'all like that. So what other, oops, what other questions uh, do y'all have? Mid-Atlantic, how are you? What other questions do y'all have? Or do y'all just want me to, to run my mouth tonight? I can do that. That's easy. That's okay. Well, while we're waiting for more questions to come on in, remember everybody, you are watching the Wealthy, or excuse me, Wealthy Wednesday show. It's a segment of the finance, the Financial Rebel show. We do this every Wednesday, 8 p.m. sharp-ish, right? 8 p.m. sharp-ish. Um, and I answer y'all's questions. Any questions you might have about real estate, about taxes, about investing, about insurance, about business, we can talk about it. All right, so Miss Lynette has a question. Sidebar question, off subject. It's not off subject, it's Wealthy Wednesdays. We answer questions, I answer questions. You're on subject. City of Philadelphia employees that have 457B, deferred compensation plan, under Nationwide are currently allowed to withdraw up to $100,000 from their account. Why would they allow this all of a sudden? What is your financial perspective of this? And what would you recommend individuals do with the money if they chose to take this offer? Oh, man, let me take a sip of water. Ms. Lynette, I literally just talked about this. I think Robert is on. Mr. Lynn, the USA, everybody go follow Mr. Lynn to USA. He's your resident online mortgage broker. My man, Robert Lewis down in Texas. Literally just had me on the show talking about the same exact subject. I'm wondering if Robert slid you a couple of dollars to talk about it so I can give him a shout out. But in all seriousness, um, that is part of the CARES Act. Um, so they're giving you the opportunity to withdraw $100,000. It's not tax free though. They're giving you the opportunity to withdraw the $100,000 from retirement accounts without penalty, early penalty, early withdrawal penalty. Because if you are younger than 59 and a half, you are supposed to pay a 10% penalty. There are some exclusions, but for the most part, for the most part, um, you're, you're due to pay that extra 10%. And so if you took out $100,000, you got a $10,000 bill off top, 10 racks off top. You owe to Uncle Sam and the IRS, and it's really hard to get around. So why would they give it? Um, they're giving it because we're still in a pandemic. We're still in a crazy state, um, not just here in the nation, but globally. So they're trying to create options and opportunities for doing what, right? What I always tell y'all, anytime the government does something, it is an incentive for who? For the economy, for the overall economy. So businesses are shut down. Governments largely are shut down. Governments are talking about cutting budgets. Companies are or laying people off, furloughing people. We still have roughly 40 million people unemployed. The government knows they got to get that money out of accounts and into the pocketbooks and wallets of dun, 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 big corporations. Joking, but not joking all at the same time. All right, because they want to be able to keep the economy going also into the pockets of small businesses. Sadly, corporations give more money to Congress through lobbyists, right, through K Street. Um, and they have a very, very, very big hold on the country and the direction the country goes in, sadly. So um, that's why they would do that. But remember, that don't mean you don't have to not pay tax on that. That is just uh, a um, that's just a uh, a temporary kind of band aid to get more people to spend money in the economy right now. Now, uh, Miss Lynette, would you do it? Now, the question I got today when I was on Robert's show, one of his clients asked, should he use it to buy a house or buy a car? What do y'all think I said? 
Yes, Ms. Edith said, we like it. Additional money can be used for investing in hustles. But Ms. Edith, if all the money is going to the same pot, is it really additional money? Like, serious question. Is it really additional money? Tara says, what are some stock testing tools you use or rec recommend? Um, Tara, go a little deeper for that. Like, so when you say testing, I think of back testing automatically. Um, I'm not a super duper big fan of back testing. I'm not sure if that's what you were talking about, though. All right. Uh, Don Johnson has what happens when you own stock in a the company, then they have a merger example, Sprint and T-Mobile. That's actually a great question. So usually two things happen. Um, two things happen. I, I can't remember the, the T-Mobile. I believe T-Mobile brought Sprint. So usually there is either a cash buyout, a stock buyout, or a stock and cash buyout. So anytime there's a merger, with publicly traded companies. Um, usually one company either will exchange it for stock, so they will give the company they're buying their stock because their stock is worth more than the value of the company that they're acquiring and or they will pay them in cash. Again, sometimes the mix in the middle. Um, and even if it's a, a, private, a public company and a private company, the same thing could happen. Same thing could happen. If anybody... Um, Follows Amazon. I just talked about Amazon a minute ago. We saw them buy. Oh, they brought the uh, they brought the uh, self driving car um, company Zooks. I think it is that had the black CEO sister from the continent. Um, that was dope. But um, Amazon also brought Zappos, the shoe company, and so I want to say that was a stock and a cash deal. Um, I would have to go back and look. So, Tara, you said that is what you're talking. So, you're talking literally about testing, back testing. You're talking about back testing. Miss <laughs> Edith says, I can, she's talking about the money, y'all, her household's money. I control it. Please don't judge me, but I hear you. Listen, this is a judgment free zone. I don't judge. I hear stories all the time. Matter of fact, I got a compliment from one of my clients earlier um, this week because they said, because they wanted me to work on their business stuff, right? And then now they're, they're potentially talking about me working on their personal stuff. And they're like, Kamari, you're not judgmental. I thought you were going to be judgmental now. I'm not judgmental because judgmentalness wastes time. It doesn't do anything to get the ball moving forward. It doesn't help for progression. So no, no judgment here. Carice, that's a very interesting picture. <laughs> Buy the house. If the only choices are house or car, you purchase the house. The car depreciates. Okay. All right. Christopher Allen says he's splitting the money right down the middle. All right. Or he's splitting the bills right down the middle. Gotcha. Lynette said T Mobile sent me a check. I was so confused. Yep. So I'm assuming you own Sprint stock and they sent you a check. Oh, so you want to compare two stocks. That so there's compare tools. If you go to if you go to finance.yahoo.com, matter of fact, let's uh let's take a quick journey over there. Um, they've been changing their platform. They've been changing their platform, so um not sure if it's still up. You can compare two companies up there. Right. So somebody give me a company to compare. Give me two companies that are currently trading now. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll do this. So we're looking at Microsoft, right? And there used to be a compare tool on here. And it brought up Pfizer, not Microsoft. Maybe I fat fingered it. So I'm going to share the screen with everybody. Share the screen. Give me one second. Hmm. 
So can everybody see the screen okay? So I have a chart up here of Microsoft. Sorry, my IG family. Um, can't do it on IG. Not yet. Maybe they'll open a platform up. They're making it more and more like Facebook anyway. So we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, hmm. All right. So you open up finance.yahoo.com, click on the chart, click on a comparison tool. So the company I feel that's probably most comparable to, to Microsoft Hmm, there's actually a couple of them. I could make a case for Amazon. I could make a case for Apple. I could even make a case for Google. But I'll do Apple. So then it'll ask you what line, size, color, and then it'll have it there. And then you can look at them, right? So actually, Terry, that was a wonderful question because um a lot of times stocks track each other pretty closely, especially the bigger they are. And so this bottom stock here, this blue one is Microsoft. This light blue one is Apple. I don't like that. Let's try a different color. Let's try green. So uh, still not great contrast, but apples in green, Microsoft's in blue. We see uh, Microsoft, excuse me, Apple has done a lot better. On here, you could even tell um, what percentage gain it's had from the starting point right here. And the starting point right here is 924. 2019, 924, 2019. So we can see Apple has been up 67.23%. Uh, Microsoft is up 46.8%. So both are doing well. I am sure both of them are, I know for a fact, both of them are beating the stock market. So I'm going to look at SP 500. This is the, this is the uh, ETF, right? The SP since that time, since that uh, September date has only been up uh, 4.12%. So it, it makes sense to compare and contrast. One day I'll talk about correlation. I don't want to bore anybody though, um, because that's very, very important as well. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. And if you're just joining in, I'm Kamari Ellis. You're watching Wealthy Wednesdays. This is the segment of the Financial Rebel Show where I answer questions. Uh, the whole show, the whole Financial Rebel show is geared towards helping the black community increase their financial IQ. Hey, listen, the better we are with money, the faster we can make our communities better, the better we can protect ourselves, um, or, or the better we can have a better quality of life. So what other questions do folks have? Let's see. Let's see here. Zooks, that's right, boss man PG. The lady's name was Zooks. Oh, Mid Atlantic, I didn't even see that. Apple versus Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft versus Google. Creations by Nature. How are you? Thank you for joining. Perk Baby, how are you? My Bobcats are in the house. Thoughts on index fund FX AIX. <laughs> you can listen to my voice all day. I'm not flirting, but <laughs> yeah, some people say that. Some people say that sometimes. I've gotten people telling me to uh, create all kinds of things just doing voiceovers. Uh, so Miss Edith wants me to nerd out. No, it wouldn't fit well today. And plus, I can't stay on all night. I can't stay on all night. So y'all saw that comparison. Tara, did that help you with that comparison? You know, so I'll, I'll tell a quick story, right? So y'all want to talk about my voice tonight, clearly. Um, so let's go there. Um, one of my um, one of my uh, IG friends said that they had their, because she's a woman, um, said that she had her cousin come on to one of my Wealthy Wednesday shows. And he told her that he can't listen to me. He said, <laughs> I have a chick's voice. 
I have a voice for chicks. Not my words. Just telling you what was communicated to me. And he said, I, I can't be sitting there listening to this dude. <laughs> right, Karan. Um, and it's funny, I turned my light down earlier and now it's hot. I don't know why that is. And I can't figure it out. It's too hot. It's probably one of my autofocus, um one of my auto autofocus settings. Yep. I'm a big Barry White fan, so I see y'all talking about Barry White. And then y'all know the Barry White story. Did y'all know this man was on welfare one year and a millionaire the next? Because that brother had a gift and a talent. Barry originally did not want to sing. I don't believe y'all got me talking about Barry White on Wealthy Wednesdays, but hey, I'm I'm all for it. Um, millionaire on welfare one year, millionaire the next. Great voice, great writer, great orchestrator or composer. Said he could never find people to really sing his stuff right. That's what made him sing. That's absolutely what made him sing. So um, Barry's Barry's problem, though, he didn't have a lot of discipline. He was overweight and he kept eating, kept having, kept smoking. Um, and it's sad. And um, please don't take this as a diss. But listen, when we get these God-given gifts, abilities, and talents, which we all have, we got to take care of ourselves. Or at least try to take care of as best as possible. So, Shamise, what do you mean? What do you mean by he's right? What What does that mean? I have a, a voice for women. Is that what you're saying? Listen, I can't sing. So, um, all singing requests will be denied. Um, the cats will come home if you hear me singing. Yes, Jack, the first three. He definitely will. His estate's still going. Yep, so listen, y'all get weird black music trivia facts when you watch the Finance Rebel Show. Speaking of relationships, Dr. Dre about to drop that back. Yes, I saw his wife is filing for divorce at the 24 years. Listen, um, one of my favorite, one of my favorite comedians online is uh his name is either David Arnold or Arnold David. I can't think of it off the top at the, off the top of my head. But he says if you get married, this thing ain't for the week. Because, <laughs> you know, everybody run and jump, falling in love. And he said, you know, well, that's a line from Love Jones, one of my favorite movies of all time. But um, he kind of says, this thing ain't for the week. Talks about family, this thing ain't for the week. So of, of relationship over 24 years, you know he got money. Dre is damn near a billionaire. What's clean money, Lynette? What's clean money? Lynette says I sound like clean money. What's that? You got me on that one. You got me stifled. Yeah, I guess I am full of stories and information. I'm a nerd, y'all. I told you that. My pops wants to turn over a property to the company my siblings and I formed. Can they use a trust to give us the property instead of us going through a sale? I am sure he can. I would definitely get a lawyer involved. Um, I get a lawyer involved because it's set up right. You want to set up right because people, you know, it's funny. So my own girl, Courtney, shout out to the Ivy investor. She's a, she's a partner um, in the black wealth project that I do every Sunday and the platform that we're building. So check that out when y'all get a chance to black wealth project. She, she's a lawyer, right? And she gets so peeved when they talk about, getting trust. Everybody wants a trust. Everybody's talking about getting LLCs. Most of these memes that are floating around out here are absolutely idiotic, but people say they love them, even though technically they're off and actually even in 50,000 foot theory, they're off as well. So yeah, Karan, um, he can do it, but you need to talk to an attorney, get a, 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 an estate, not a criminal attorney, not a, um, not a criminal attorney, not a um, a uh, wreck chaser attorney, um, not a divorce attorney, not a family law attorney. You need an estate attorney to handle that proceed for you or a tax attorney. Usually estate attorneys and tax attorneys kind of go hand in hand. Some some special some tax attorneys specialize in estates. Some estate attorneys specialize in tax. Sometimes they're totally separate. 
All right, so I see. So um, that what what is clean money? Did you get back to that clean money? Hey, Miss Cheryl, how you doing? Thank you for joining us on YouTube. Not just an estate planner. An estate planner is cool. All attorneys are not estate planners. There, there is a difference. So one of the reasons why I can talk about so many different financial topics is because I'm older, right? I'm seasoned. <laughs> um, and like I said, my dad was an accountant, so I owe a lot to him. Um, got to sit around and see a lot of things. Like I said, after that, after doing accounting and tax work, I then started to do a lot of financial planning and account, excuse me, a lot of financial advising and planning firms. So I got to work at some pretty big um, planning firms and highly reputable planning firms. Plus, one of my mentors is like a tyrant <laughs> when he comes to planning. He's very serious about it. Um, he's another nerd like me. But intensity is on a whole other level, whole other level. I tried to get him to come on. He won't do it, though. He won't do it. But um, at one point, I was working at an agency that was under the MetLife umbrella, and they were the top agency, under the, one of the top agencies under the MetLife umbrella. So basically, they sold more life insurance than any other agency in the company, country. And the way they did it, was they did a lot of estate planning, a lot of business succession planning as well. And guess what? The most convenient solution for those things a lot of times is life insurance. So they figured out a great way to sell life insurance by adding another service or another value add to the estate planning and the succession planning. Um, so I got to see a lot of things, a lot of cases, I can't really talk about all of them, but I got to see and kind of experience and when we do strategy sessions, so that's why I know about estate stuff. I don't necessarily, I mean, I enjoy strategy across the board, but that's, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. Um, Jack, the first three said his divorce isn't like Johnny Carson's third divorce, which is what Eddie, yes, yeah, you're right. Um, Eddie Carson got, got paid like, um, I'm sorry, Eddie Carson paid out like half and he was only married for like a year or two. Oh, you know what? That's a great question, um, Jack, the first three. I need to highlight that. I need to highlight that. And I don't necessarily like these companies, and I try not to talk about them. But I want to know, before I put this question up, what do you think is so much? Why is it so much? Like, what do you consider so much? So the question that I got that I'm going to share on the screen. Uh, oh, hold on one second. Technical difficulties. But listen, keep the uh, questions coming. Give me one second. One second, because I want to. This is a great question. Because folks love these people. Absolutely adore them go to them every year. So the question is, why does H&R Block, Jackson, you would, and the other one, there's another big one too, start so much just to follow 1040? Simple answer, because they can, right? Um, I'm serious, but in all seriousness, the people pay for it. The Jackson, you would, H&R Block market, their primary market is it tends to be people that want um, fast refunds um, that turn around. If you look at their marketing, it's genius, by the way. H&R Block does $2 billion a year. Now, if you Google H&R Block and just Google H&R Block lawsuits, you'll understand why I have a problem with them. But again, they make $2 billion a year. But I believe in integrity over everything. So I couldn't do their business model. So... Um, Jack, the first three says, I've seen as much as thousands of dollars. Every return is different. So, 
um, I can charge a I can charge for return that may may appear to be a simple 1040 on the surface, but it's more complicated than that, right? So a lot of a lot of these big block, um, big box stores, uh, tax shops, tax sweatshops, what I like to call them, like to just churn out returns, and they tend to charge per form. And so the higher the form, or the more forms you need, typically the more money it's going to cost you. And they're good accountants that charge per form too, right? That's kind of an industry standard. I don't charge per form. I charge a flat fee, and then it will increase based upon complexity and difficulty. Um, but I don't do the form thing. I like simplicity, so I don't like adding up all the forms, even though the programs will add them up for you. But um, if you have a 1040, right, and you have rental property, that's not your basic 1040, but it is a 1040 return. And so your rental income will be filed on a Schedule E. If you have a business or a side hustle, if you drive Uber or Lyft or do Grubhub, you then are a business owner. You want to get it to 99. You then have to file what's called a Schedule C. So again, you could have a 1040 with a Schedule E if you have some rental property or some royalties, like if you sold some books or things like that. You could have a Schedule C if you're a business owner, right? Anybody with a 1099 is a business owner, even if you don't realize it. So you get to take advantage of the tax code. Like I always say, business owners and real estate investors, well, investors overall have the greatest advantage when it comes to the tax code. And that's the way the government is incentivizing people to spend, utilize, invest their money. But, you know, I could, I could easily do what you might call a 1040 return. Um, that's Schedule C, Schedule E. Maybe they stole some, sold some stocks, right? Then you got your Schedule D that's involved. That's over a thousand bucks. It it can happen pretty time, pretty easily. And then add on, and then add on, um, like a, a rapid refile fee or there's bank fees that get um, interwoven in there um, as well. And so a lot of times they take those fees out of refunds. Um, and there are other big box stores that have been found guilty of this. That's Google. So the big ones are H&R Block, Jackson, you in Liberty, right? You can put H&R Block lawsuit in the Google search, which will bring it up. You can bring Jackson Hewitt. By the way, they're like all the same people. It's like one guy that's kind of, he's a mad genius when it comes to marketing tax to um, middle and lower um, American folks. Um, just put, you know, again, Jackson Hewitt in the search bar, Jackson Hewitt lawsuit in a search bar and put um, Liberty Tax and um, lawsuit in a search. Matter of fact, I think Liberty just got found. I think Liberty just got found guilty of something. Recently. So I don't know. I don't know. Let's pull it up. Okay, so you said, no, nah, just a simple 1040 I've had. I had to fix a few. So, Jack, are you a tax pro too? All right, my IG people, I am running up against the clock. I am at a minute 47 seconds. So, I'm going to go ahead in this live so it doesn't get cut off. And I'm going to come right back and continue to answer um, Jack's the, the first three um, uh, questions. So, I'll be right back, everybody. Facebook and Facebook and YouTube, y'all stay put. Don't go nowhere as I restart everything, but I will pull up the read text so y'all can see what I'm talking about. I ain't crazy. Matter of fact, I think I did a show on this at some point. And there goes my Lightning again, um, blowing me up. So, uh, give me two seconds and we'll fix this. We will fix this. Listen, while you're watching, go ahead and throw your questions in the comments. All right. Remember, you're watching the Finance Rebel Show, the Wealthy Wednesday edition. This is the segment where I come on every week. And I answer your questions live. 
do me a favor. I think we're on to something, right? I believe I'm adding and creating great value for everybody. Share this with somebody. Share this with somebody who was looking to increase their financial IQ. Somebody in the black community that's looking to up their overall financial gain or who might just have questions about something that they're going through. I get them all the time. Um, I don't mind I don't mind um, answering questions. I know some professionals like to charge for that. Um, if I if I answered everybody's question, I would never get any work done. So that's why I do them on Wednesdays. That's exactly why I do them on Wednesdays. So if y'all get value out of these Wednesdays, do me a favor, say yes in the chat or I get value from these. They're helpful. Just let me know. Um, Cause you know, sometimes I get one off questions or one off answers or one off responses. Like the other day, like I was telling y'all that I got um, when a lady said um, that my warning about uh, the scam artist out there charging two thousand dollars for um, filling out applications, they got back to me. But that was one person. You know, sometimes these videos get thousands and thousands of views. Sometimes they get a couple hundred of views. Um, as long as I, you know, as long as I can help one person, I'm cool. Um, that's kind of my metric. All right. So I wanted to show y'all something. And so here, I don't know. She means I'll come right back to that question. So we're talking about why does h and Block and Jackson, you would charge so much just to file a 1040. And then I kind of went off on a tangent a little bit. Just a little bit, but I do I do want to talk about this. So, the Justice Department announced settlement with Liberty Tax Service. All right, the Justice Department announced today that it had filed a complaint with the U.S. District Court in Norfolk, seeking entry of a court order requiring Franchise Group and Intermediate L1 LLC, that's the name of the franchise or an owner of the Liberty Tax Service stores, to refrain from specific acts enact enhanced internal compliance controls, right? Regarding the detection of false tax returns and pay for an independent monitor to oversee Liberty's compliance with the proposed court order. All right, so that's just one. So Liberty is one of the largest tax preparation service providers in the United States, according to its public filings. Though its stores, Liberty filed, through, excuse me, through its stores, Liberty filed approximately 1.3 to 1.9 million tax returns each year between 2015 and 2019. And for years 2012 to 2018, Liberty claimed over 28 billion in federal tax refunds. All they do is market to people that want tax refunds or that get tax, ref tax refunds. Listen, when you're really making money, you're not getting a tax refund. You're paying tax to the government, typically throughout the years. So look at this name right here. In this joint motion, the parties request relief that would permanently bar Liberty from engaging or employing certain individuals going forward, including the company's founder and former CEO, John T. Hewitt. Now, remember I said they're all like this one incessant pool of people. So that Hewitt name, where do you think that comes from? y'all think that comes from uh, that's not what I uh, meant to do so it's uh it's very interesting uh this company. Because I want to say, I'm trying to find a history of John T. Hewitt. I want to say he started off, he started off with uh, H&R Block. Right. Okay. So let me just shift gears on you all real quick. Hmm. 
Okay, so Karan said uh, definitely appreciates the value. Um, that was great information. Okay. Uh, Sarah, Sarah's doing her homework. Sarah's doing her homework. All right, so I got to speed this up. Y'all got questions, and I got to answer. So y'all see the lawsuit, right? He really got barred. He can't do tax business in the United States anymore. All right. So when you look here, um, again, I don't know how well you can read this. It looks pretty small, in my opinion. But Hewitt began his career in 1969 while still a student at the University of Buffalo by attending a tax preparation course offered by H&R Block. Finding the topic quite interesting, he subsequently obtained employment with the company as a tax preparer by 1980. He was the youngest regional director at H&R Block, running over 250 offices. And listen, back in those days, it was really the Wild Wild West um, amongst those folks. Uh, so he found and the goal, okay, found of Jackson Hewitt. That goal would materialize in August 1992. So he left H&R Block and then he went to Jackson Hewitt. And then wind up subsequently, I think he sold um, Jackson Hewitt and then went to Liberty Tax and is doing the same thing over and over again. Listen, he found a model. He rinsed, washed, and repeated it over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that, that was definitely before um, the digital filing era. Um, and there was a lot of sh shenanigans going on. Hey, Candace, how you doing? Speaking of which, that excuse me, I'll tell another story in a minute. All right, so all right, so let me get back to these questions before y'all get mad at me. I don't want no smoke. Don't want no smoke. All right. So Shamise asked the tax question. She said, tax question, what would be a reasonable compensation on an income of five hundred K? So Shamise, um, I, I know you're probably misusing language, but it's hard for me to answer that question. So I'm assuming, tell me if I'm going wrong, right? You're asking me what is reasonable compensation on revenue or sales of $500,000 in your business. And so it sounds like an S-Corp question, right? So when you have an S-Corp, you are if, if you have a profitable S-Corp, you're supposed to take a salary. And when you're supposed to take a salary, when you're an S-Corp, when you are an owner-operator, you are supposed to take a reasonable salary or market rate salary. So Shamise chime in and let me know if I'm in the right ballpark. Hey, Rhonda Cox, how you doing? Uh, my homie, Serena Thomas. Serena, I do what I do every Wednesday. It's Wealthy Wednesday and we answer questions. Um, if any of you remember, I did an interview with Serena. Serena's my homegirl for many, many years, over a decade now. But Serena is like the queen of all government contracts. Um, I know she has a course. I'm not sure if it's open or closed now, but y'all go follow Serena Thomas. Um, I had people that watched that interview. As a matter of fact, I have several people that watched that interview, signed up for Serena's course, and now has government contracts. So I asked y'all a question a couple of minutes ago. Do y'all get value out of these? So I do these interviews with people that be bringing dollars to y'all. I bring value to y'all. So, you know, hopefully y'all appreciate me. Give me my roses while I'm here. And um, give Serena a shout out because she definitely brings roses and value to the entire community. All right. So, Shamise, all right. So, Shamise has asked me a question S Corp. S Corp has money, made money, made profit. She's the owner operator. I'm a, Shamise, I don't know if it's you or not, you're asking for a friend, right? So, I'm going to assume it's for you and not a friend, right? So, Shamise made 500K. How you doing? How you doing, Shamise? Can I holler at you? See, see how we can get these these taxes down. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, right? Shamise made five hundred k. She wants to know what reasonable salary is. So reasonable salary is dependent upon what the market bears, depending upon what you do. You could have a reasonable salary of a hundred thousand dollars. You could have a reasonable salary of two hundred thousand dollars. What's the profit? Because you gave me you gave me the gross, right? So we got the gross number, the big number, the number that accounts for everything. Um, that's, I'm assuming that's the five hundred thousand, or 
Shamise could be talking about the net. She's really balling out. She's a part of the 1%. DJ Graham, how you doing? I saw your lovely wife on. I was just about to talk about you. I'll still talk about you, though. Talk about you anyway. <laughs> um, Graham's my friend. He actually gave me a call today um, and said I encouraged him to begin investing and take investing in the stock market seriously. Um, and watched and watched the interview about the brother who's in jail and learned how to invest in jail. And his his words was, man, what's my excuse? This brother learned how to invest in jail and I'm out here free. I can do the same thing. He's right. I will say this though, the brother in jail, all he's got is time on his hand. So he can he can do some things. He can do some things if he's focused. So Shamise, am I am I correct? Am I correct in what I'm saying? So, all right, well, let's go with 500000 What's your profit off of that? You could have revenue of 500000 and you could spend 499000 on expenses. Right? So, you could have $1 profit. So, what is a reasonable compensation? So, it just really all depends. And I know I'm being a little technical, but I don't like giving wrong answers. So, that's why I like to drill down and ask questions. I know sometimes it drives people crazy, but you know, I'm more concerned about doing a good job um, than your feelings. So you got to get out your feelings. Uh, uh, Wanda Vernon Collier said 800 million. What's that in regards to? By the way, thank you for joining us, Ms. Wanda. And Cheryl said, uh, that was awesome. He was going to. So, all right, you don't want to trigger an IRS audit. So listen, if you do the right thing, don't worry about triggering an IRS audit. I know, you probably don't like that answer. IRS audits come in many sizes, flavors, and fashions. You can randomly get an audit. Yes, you can also trigger an audit too. Here's where you, what you will do if you, um, here's what will really trigger an audit if you don't take a salary at all. And yes, the IRS is after S-Corps who um, pay under market rate salary because the s corp allows you to skate around self-employment tax i don't want to give you you know i don't want to put you out of sleep with all the technicals but that's a way of getting out of paying into medicaid or medicare and social security by being on salary and when you're an s corp you would still have to pay into medicare and and social security so you know here's a wild guess without seeing your stuff go two hundred thousand. um if you have income profit of 500k, you can go uh, 200,000 in salary. Hopefully, um, we're not talking about 2019 when the W-2s were due by January 31st of 2020, um, and you are severely late. So, but you know, if you're making that kind of bread, you should be sitting down and talking with a tax advisor, enrolled agent, a CPA, um, any of those, any of those type of folks to reduce your tax bill, right? Listen, tax is the enemy of wealth. Tax is the biggest enemy of wealth. So let's not take it seriously. Excuse me. Let's not take it lightly. All right. So moving right along, right along, right along. What are your top three recommendations for businesses that get the EDIL? Well, to follow the guidelines of it, to reinvest in your business, Figure out what you need for your business, right? I don't know if that's three or not, but um, I would say follow the guidelines. There's a lot of shenanigans, a lot of foolery going on out here with EIDL and PVP. You already see they're locking people up and pressing charges on people that are pulling fraudulent PVP loans. Um, by the way, the Senate just extended the PPP or payroll protection program to August 8th. They still have roughly $130 million. So if you have a business, if you have a business, if you have a real business, a legitimate business, apply for PPP and EIDL. I've been getting a lot of questions. As a matter of fact, I talked about that the other day as well. A lot of people are afraid to take the loan. But at the same breath, some of these people that I've talked to have said that they can't get access to capital. Well, guess what? The government's here. They're offering access to capital at super low rates, right? The, the PPP loan, the payroll protection loan is 1% for 60 months or five years. So if you get approved for it, I would take it and I would run. 
and I would implement it into my business and I would grow my business. The EIDL, the EIDL loan is 3.75%, right? A little more than a mortgage. Usually the mortgage that long um, has the best rates, but it's a 30 year loan. 3.75%. Apply people, apply, apply now, apply today, apply yesterday, apply, apply, apply. And tell your friends to apply that have real businesses. Don't, don't, I, I wouldn't try to run those scams on the federal government. Your arms are too short to box with the gov. So, um, yeah, I definitely would not do that. So, uh, Miss Alethea, I hope that was three. I didn't keep count. Every time y'all give me these numbers, I, I go into these like monologues and I, I lose track, I lose count. Um, last week, um, the person asked me what was the top tips they had for um, black people, top financial tips for black folks. I think I rattled off like 11. I can't remember what all 11 are right now. <laughs> okay, so Tara says, can you tell us how the tax incentives works in opportunity zones and does that apply to rental properties? So O zones or opportunity zones are all in vogue now. Um they do represent a great opportunity for white people to make more money off of black communities. Just want to say and get that out of the way. Um, you have some folks that, that think it's, it's so great, but yeah, there's tax. There are definitely tax incentives. Um, if you roll your capital gains, right? So let's say you, let's say you had a million shares of Apple and it's generated a billion dollars for you. You can sell those shares of Apple and you can roll it over into a certified um, opportunity zone. And you wouldn't have to pay any cap gains. And I want to say over 10 years, you wouldn't have to pay any, any tax on it. I have to go back and get the technicals on that. But it's it's a great way of uh, minimizing your tax debt. And a lot of big companies, a lot of hedge funds, a lot of private equity, a lot of old timers with folks are going to pounce on this. You talk about gentrification. Ozones are going to bring more gentrification to black communities or black and brown communities. Let me be clear. So, um, you know, everybody thinks they're so great. Everybody, uh, you know, so I think everybody that's watching now knows I am not a fan of Donald Trump. I'm not going to make this a political show, but you do have to realize that politics and money are inextricably linked. You cannot separate the two. Politics and wealth are um, absolutely tied. You cannot separate the two. So you got a lot of black folks running around saying Donald Trump's great because of ozones and many other things, but he's a racist. And so I kind of have a hard stance. You know how George Bush says we don't negotiate with terrorists. Well, I don't negotiate with, with racists. I'm tired of racism. Um, it, it, I, I do believe um, black, black elevation is the responsibility of black folks. But I do think um, like I say, kind of endear white people in my letter that white people have to be accountable as well. So there's accountability on both sides of the aisle. However, I'm not waiting for anybody to come through and, you know, do something great for me. Thanks, Christopher Allen. Uh, you're getting value. My man, appreciate you. Serena says, keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you. You keep doing what you're doing. And then we got to circle back around because I got to get into some government contracting. She's going to laugh at that. She's been trying to get me in a government contract for years. Okay, so Tara says it's very informational. So, yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, you can have properties that are in the ozones as well, because Tara, you asked about property, rental properties inside of ozones, but they had to be owned by an official opportunity zone fund. Um, I haven't done a whole lot because of research in them. I got to, I got to just because. I just see it for what it is, um, but I do need to go do some more due diligence on it um, so I can clearly explain it um, and, and talk about everything. So, oh boy. All right, so Serena, you're going into territory I didn't really want to go into. So Serena says, my kids are on payroll, including the six-year-old, but it is best to hire your children under an escort. She is correct. Serena has good counsel. I'm not her counsel, man, but she has good counsel. Under an S Corp or sole proprietorship, which anybody can do. You're a sole proprietor from the gate. 
can the kids work for more than one family business? What's the advantage? So yes, the kids can work for more than one family business. The reason why I said what I said about, oh boy, I didn't want to go into this territory is because everybody thinks hiring kids is the new cheat code. So they want to hire the kids just to get a tax benefit, but the kids not to work. That's asinine, that's idiotic, that's totally ridiculous. I'll tell you why. It's a great way to get audited. Great way to get audited. Uh, Miss Edith says she started a watch party. Thank you, Miss Edith. I appreciate you starting a watch party on Facebook. Definitely appreciate you. Um, you know, that's been going around. I've done videos on it before. I know a whole slew of black accountants and black attorneys and black um, CPAs that have done videos on this because sadly, we like to spread false information or misinformation. And then sadly, those that are not in the know love to defend it and act like they are in the know. Um, so, uh, Carice, I, I see your, your question. I'll come to you. So, um, yes, you can absolutely hire your child. Um, it makes sense when the child actually brings value to your corporation or your business. Serena asked the question. Oops. Can the kids work for more than one family business? Yes, they can. Here's the trick. If they make more than 12,000, I believe the standard deduction is 12,400 this year. Don't quote me. It's either 12,200 or 12,400. If they make more than $12,200 in a year, then they will be subject to tax potentially, potentially. And so you try to keep it below 12,200. You let the child use the money, skate off, buy stuff, save stuff, invest stuff, hopefully invest more than spend. But you know, you can use those things for other things, um, tuition, um, food, clothing. And so you can take your business money and then legally, you can legally use it for um, money in your household, but you have to do it properly. You have to do it properly. So the idea isn't bad. It's usually just the implementation behind the scenes that is piss poor. But I know Serena always dots her I's and crosses her T's. Um, so I don't have to worry about that with her. There's, there's really no, this, the disadvantage is when you do it wrong, right? The advantage is you can, they call it income shifting. You can shift income out of your business where you might have to pay tax on it to your child where they're not paying any tax because usually under 12,200, you're not paying any tax. And Serena, I know you have three, four children. Um, so you can have four employees right there that work in the business and you can shift that income from the business to your children and have them do, you know, things that help the business. I mean, shoot, your one son, well, actually all your kids are pretty, right? They could all be models um, and they could get paid for that. But, um, you know, uh, uh, I, I know they could do a lot of things, whether it's mailings, whether it's filings, whether it's, um, I have my daughter send out cards to my clients. I'm trying to get my son on board to do some of my video editing, but he's uh, a little resistant. He don't want to do nothing to play video games. But you don't know that's about to end. You have to earn your keep, young fella. Got to earn your keep. So I see one question over on IG. That's been here for a minute. Okay, Creations by Naisha says, what about SBA? So Creations by Naisha, what about SBA? <laughs> what, what's your question about SBA? SBA stands for the Small Business Administration. Shout out Jake Sharia Moore, my homie Jasmine. Um... Karan, I see your question. Uh, yes, Karan. I'm not going to forget what else you said. I know you want your credit. So before I forget, I even wrote it down. So Grim's new plan, right? So he said now that he's been seeing it light and I've been talking to Grim about investing for over. So a lot of y'all don't know I used to be a party promoter. DJ Grim was basically my, my go-to party, uh, my go-to party DJ. Done a lot of big parties um, in Philly. So I've been preaching investment, stock investment to Grum for 20 years. 20 years. So, yeah. Hey, Tycoon Rich, uh, your sister Edith told you to log in. Okay, cool, cool. Thanks for joining us, Tycoon Rich One. Um, so, yeah. So now, after 20 years, Grum got excited. He saw my man in prison. 
I need to look up his name. I want to say it's Curtis something. Saw my man um, in prison, and now he wants to invest. I also gave Grim a, a birthday gift um, to uh, purchase some stocks as well. So I, I've been I've been hounding him for 20 years, and I sent him, you know, small some money. It wasn't nothing crazy, nothing crazy, to uh, to uh, begin his journey, and now he's gone. So he said what he said was, oh, by the way, Candace, his wife, is on. Candace is so sweet. She's great people. Um, Candace actually would hound Grim about getting with me too, right? So listen, we we homies, we friends. He uh he's been dissing me for years though. But again, he saw the brother in prison prison, and that's no diss to the brother in prison. Because the brother in prison is showing how people can go in prison and have a redemption story and turn around and do great things. All right. So Grim said, uh he if he spends three hundred dollars on sneakers. He will have to, in turn, spend three hundred dollars in stocks. So I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that, right? We we got somewhere. The question is going to be, the question is going to be, um, will he stay the path? Will he be committed? Will he have discipline, ladies and gentlemen? And so I get to uh, joke on Grim a little bit, but uh, it's all good. It's all love there. So um, congratulations, Grim, on seeing the light. Continue to follow the light. And invest that money in the stock market. The stock market is probably the greatest wealth creation vehicle that has ever been created, only second to life insurance. All right, Candace, so you got to join in with him too. Um, so Carice asks, LOL, what is an opportunity zone? Don't kill me. So opportunity zone is usually properties along commercial corridors and urban areas, hood areas, poor areas. Um, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm focused, man. Tell stop the holiday. It's funny. Um, I was thinking about Jay Z. That's a that's a Jay Z lyric right there. Um, me and Grim are definitely both Jay Z fans. I was talking about relationships, and just indulge me for a minute as I sidetrack. I was talking about relationships, right? And so Jay Z has a great lyric about relationships and i think a lot of people miss it um he says i got two maids two butlers all i'm missing is a missus that i can play cards with or got, that i can play spades with with my hand up all trust so what he's signifying in that lyric is that i want to be with somebody that i can be naked with right and I say naked because they're exposed, they're vulnerable, right? With my partner, and it's all good. It's all trust. I'm not going to be judged. I'm not going to be kidded. I'm not going to be looked upon. And they say that we can build together from there. So listen to that ly lyric. Um, that's from Excuse Me, Miss 2, Part 2. All right, so... All right, Mid-Atlantic, is that... Mid Atlantic elect as for books for new investors. Books for new investors. So you already said you read the Intelligent Investor, and I'm sorry, that was on the last one before we got interrupted. You said you read the Intelligent Investor by um, Benjamin Graham. That's a great book. Um, bear with me for a second, folks. So I'm I'm very much a fundamentals person. And what I mean by fundamentals, um, I'm, I'm definitely in a fundamental analysis, but I'm talking about fundamentals. And if you really want to be a great investor, you have to understand money, the economy or economics through and through. You can't just, in my opinion, you got some people that just want to jump in and be great traders and make a million dollars tomorrow after they cast their lottery ticket. So I think people try to buy lottery tickets all the time. Um, and a lot of times people in our community, the black community, are looking for that lottery ticket. If y'all been rocking with me for a minute, you know I, I talk about that all the time. But what's the odds of a lottery ticket? It ain't much. Carissa, I hope I answered your question. You know what, y'all? I'm jumping around. So let me, before I go into the book, y'all see I got it here. I'll talk about it in a minute. I want to answer Carissa's question because I told her opportunity zones were just urban areas during commercial corridors. What they're doing in, in opportunity zones is that they're giving significant tax breaks to people that invest in those zones, opportunity zones, O zones, 
That's what they call them. All right. So sorry for jumping around on y'all for a minute. I got excited. Grim distracted me. <laughs> yes, I'm blaming it on him. So um, this book right here, hopefully we can get it in focus, how money works. I think everybody that's serious, serious, like serious, serious about getting their bread on and they really want to understand what's going on should get this book. Again, how money works. It's very graphical in nature, but it talks about things like accounting. Remember, I just brought up the subject of net income, right? It's talking about net income, very graphical in nature. So you can read it. You can look at the uh, examples and you can learn some things. I think that's a book that everybody should get. Um, and, you know, it's something you can probably do with your children, too. You know what? I haven't tried this with my children. I will do that. They get tired of me talking about stocks and stuff, but I'm going to keep beating it to the head. So that's that's one book, Mid Atlantic, um, that I think everybody should get. Uh, I'm trying to think about more. So I went to college for this. So I got a lot of textbooks and textbooks. I don't really think they do anybody any justice. Um, oh, oh, uh, 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 what's his name? What's his name? I can't think of his name, y'all. Help me out. What's his name, y'all? Y'all know his name. Uh, give me one second. I'm trying to focus on this name. Right. Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch has a whole bunch of books. Um, and listen, I consider reading the text, the book, which I love the most. But what I get to do the most is actually audible. So listen, stop listening to junk radio. It's not good on the radio anymore. Radio's dead. It's dead, I said. Listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks. Take that time to fill yourself with some knowledge that you can take and put into play. Um, and you can make some money. And then watch your money pile up. So yeah, I'll show it to you real quick. Uh One Up on Wall Street is a book by by Peter Lynch. If you don't know who Peter Lynch is, Peter Lynch is one of the greatest investors of our time. He worked at Fidelity, he was a fund manager there. And he kind of talks about, matter of fact, I kind of steal a lot of my swaggy sauce from uh, Peter Lynch and Warren Buffett, right? I look up to both of them. But there you see it. Oh, my God, gray hair. Uh, but he says, again, invest in things you know. This guy bought, um, oh, man, what was the big time pantyhose that came in the, in the eggshell? It was the, the pantyhose that came in the eggshell. What were, what were those called? Was it shears or... I don't know. I'm a dude. I ain't supposed to know. Um, but he made a bold little money off of that just by a simple observation. He didn't do a whole lot of investment. Um, he didn't do a, a, a whole lot of anything. He noticed that women were buying these pantyhose, but I can't think of the name of them. I want to say it's Shears. Yep. What up on Wall Street? Thank you, Mr. Edith. Uh, yes, make money and watch. Yeah, that's a 50 cent lyric. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know if y'all notice it. Sometimes um, rap lyrics just appear in my head and I, uh, I let them loose. <laughs> All right, so Tara is already on the wealth train, right? She says, I love to listen to Audible and podcasts while my walk. Yes, that is a great thing. That's something I do. So many of y'all know I've been kind of on this health journey. I ran 100 miles. In May, fell off the wagon in June. I did some bike riding, little running, but <laughs> uh, did some bike riding. Miss Edith is hilarious. Um, but when I'm running or when I'm walking, I'll listen to a podcast. I'll listen to a book. Um, I read and listen to all kinds of things. Tara, what, what are you listening to now? What's the last book you uh, listen to on Audible and what podcast do you listen to? I would love to know. Legs. Okay, legs. All right. Legs was the one. Got you. Got you. Got you. Right. So he made a boatload off of legs just because he noticed that people were buying them. And remember, um, we always talk about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett says 
don't buy stocks. Remember, stocks are just a mere portion of a business. It's a business, right? So you want to buy businesses. You don't want to buy stocks. So basically meaning, um, basically meaning buy good businesses, buy stocks and good businesses. Don't just buy the stocks because you think you're trying to ch chase it. So creations by Naisha, you said, does all independent contractors qualify? Qualify for what? Oh, are you talking about EIDL? Or a PPP? No, they don't all qualify. You do have to meet certain criteria. They do want to see that you have a real business, that it's profitable, right? Because if you have a business, right, these are loans. They're giving out loans. They want to see that they can be paid back. Um, Jack, the first three said the intelligence and the intelligent investor was a tough read. How does the book read in relation to that? Uh, if you're talking about, oh, if you're talking about, um, uh, if you're talking about, went up on Wall Street. It's it's a bunch of stories. Yes, uh, the intelligent investor is a bear. It's very it it is boring. Um, I wouldn't necessarily. I, I tell people to read it, but it's it's hard. I ain't gonna lie to you. I gotta keep it funky with that one. Health is like the stock market is up and down. Yeah, it can be up and down, but we gotta work to keep it up. The health. If you're talking about physical health, or are you talking about the health of the stock market? Let me just see. All right, Candace says I will buy some more stock outside of Prudential. I'm with it. All right, that's what's up. Just know, right? The stock market does fluctuate. It's up now. I don't know if y'all remember the beginning of the year when everybody was panicking, when everybody was looking up in the sky and was like, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and they're running for the hills, and they were ready to sell out of their stocks. I said, don't panic. It'll be back. Listen, the biggest thing, the biggest thing in investing is understanding your time horizon. When I say time horizon, when will you need it? So, for example, if you're 40, you want to retire in 15 years, that's uh, that's 55. You want to do early retirement. So you want to buy stocks or investments that fit that profile that should be able to do well over that 15 years. Typically, stocks don't do well in year one. Or you shouldn't try to buy stocks in year one. No, no. So uh, Jack, the first three said, so the book you recommend suggested is just as dry, dry as Graham's book. No, it is not. It's way better. It's a great story. Um, it's a great story. Let me let me look because he has another one. He's got one up on Wall Street. Oh, look at the intelligent investor right there. Um, beating the street. Beating the street is good, too. I can't remember if I've read Learn to Earn, but I like Peter Lynch. I like his style, I like his approach to uh, writing. Hey, Key for Change, how you doing? Uh, the Media Next Door is a good book. It's kind of outdated. Um, Chris, Chris, Chris Rogan. Excuse me, Chris Hogan wrote the Everyday Millionaire. Um, he's coupled up with Dave with Dave Ramsey, but I thought the Everyday Millionaire was kind of like a remix of, um, the, oh man, I don't forgot the name of the book that quick, of the uh, Everyday Millionaire. No, it's not the Everyday Millionaire. What is it? The Millionaire Next Door. Jeez. So I thought Chris Hogan's book is better. Y'all know I'm pro black. Uh, so if you were interested in reading The Millionaire Next Door, I would definitely say read Chris Hogan's Everyday Millionaires. Same type of concepts, plus you help a brother out with the book sales. So uh, that's that's what I say. Um, do I have an example of something I've used out of his book? Not really. I mean, so, yeah. So Mid Atlantic, do you follow me? Have we talked before? Y'all know I talk about the color of law a lot, right? Uh so I mean I say buy what you buy what you use, right? That's kind of what he does. So my whole cash app and Jack the first three, I'm not sure how long um you've been um, rocking with me on Instagram, but 
I talk about some of the, my cash app portfolio. So I've been buying Ford stock um, just to show how um, just to show how easy it is to buy and invest in the stock market. Um, some a lot of people like love the challenge that they think Ford stock is uh, trash. But I buy Ford stock because I love F-150s. Right. I think they're dope. I don't own one, um, but I've used them. I believe in a company. I've studied the company for some quite some time now, and I think they will do well. They're already in, in the um, electronic car space or the electric car space. Um, so that's kind of a kind of one. I bought Starbucks because I go to Starbucks a lot. Well, at least before pandemic. So my whole thesis was or my whole idea was why spend all this money at Starbucks when I'm not an owner. Right. And I've been in investments at my highest levels for years, <laughs> years. So I use that kind of as an example to show that you can do it. So in my in my cash app portfolio, I have some Amazon because I go to Amazon a lot. You know what? My whole cash app portfolio basically is an example of um, Peter Lynch's book. Um, MTA 26, how are you? Christ Center for Life, how are you? Um, I thought I saw a couple more questions. Tyzine, how are you? Thank you for joining. Drexel Kid 2569, Soldier Forever. Thanks for joining. I thought I saw another example or another question, rather. Okay, I don't see any more. Last audio book was Dave Ramsey. I didn't enjoy it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Dave Ramsey. Listen, I don't think Dave Ramsey is bad. I think Dave Ramsey just does middle class middle class type of financial advice or financial commentary. Um, I, nobody is a cookie cutter solution. The same strategy that works for Tara is not necessarily going to work for us either. And I think you should be able to speak to both. The idea of just paying off all your debt and um, buying some term insurance, I think it is, is basic. And yeah, a lot of people, a, lo a lot of people, um, need that help right because we definitely have a debt issue again most people have spender's disease they can't stop spending and then when you give them you know kind of unlimited power with a uh with a um with a credit card they usually can't control themselves that's why we have about 14 trillion dollars in outstanding debt and consumer debt in this country right now so you know but i get it that that works for dave Dave's audience, though, like, yo, you got, you cannot do you cannot do anything but respect that man. His audience is they love that dude, like through and through. Love that man through and through. Um, hopefully at some point we'll see more black folks kind of ascend to that to that type of position that can help the community do better with their money. Um, I mean, here's a story. I do some work with a, with a lawyer um, sometimes. I, I went to see her. The lady that worked in her office knew I did finance, knew I worked all around with institutional investing and tax and accounting, yada, yada, yada. She still is pushing Dave Ramsey on me. I mean, that's how much of a raving fan audience or raving fans that Dave has cultivated. You got to respect that. Got to respect that. So... Uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? What's so okay? So Miss Edith talked about the color of law. Yes, you have to read it. Y'all have to read the color of law. Listen, black folks on this stream, y'all want to really see what's under the under the hood, how things really got messed up, what really created ghettos today. Like everybody talks about black on black crime, blah blah blah. Redlining is a major 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 reason for why ghettos are today and if you want to talk about black on black crime which is bullshit excuse my language um because every community has crime every community highest levels of crime is because of proximity to people right i hope i don't have to go over that with y'all just know that when you hear somebody say black on black crime they are severely misinformed all right and it's one of those easy terms that you can throw around but there's no white on white crime there's no mexican on mexican crime 
sorry for mixing race with ethnicity, which a lot of people don't understand either, right? There's no Asian on Asian crime or Japanese on Japanese crime. Nobody else puts out those statistics. But yet black folks are still comfortable to this day saying that. But y'all don't realize that as a tool of white supremacy. Come on, folks. We got to step it up a couple of levels. We got to stop meditating like Buddhists. By the way, that was another lyric. Um, Sorry. Um, Tyrone Rich one. Should either get a 501C or LLC. So uh, Tycoon Rich one, I'm not totally sure. I don't know about those plans for uh, Miss Edith. I'm not sure what a 501C is. Are you talking about a 501C3, which is a nonprofit um, or maybe a 401K? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, chime in and let me know what you're thinking. But yeah, we got to It's not enough just to have money, folks. If you got money and no culture, you're no good to your people. And you'll fall for the okie doke. That's why only 2% of black money stays in the community. We spend our money with everybody else. We're lacking culture. Um, so all right, so all right, Mid-Atlantic Alex said he's reading the color of law. So Mid-Atlantic, tell me what you think about the color of law so far. All right, just looking through IG now. Okay, I knew where you were going. Cool, cool. Okay, what is the difference between investing in stock options and ETFs? Um, Stock options are derivatives, right? What is a derivative? I know that's going to be the next question. A derivative that is something that gets its pricing from something else. So stock options get gets its pricing from the actual stocks. That's the underlying. So when you're buying stock options, you're not actually buying stocks. You're buying an option. You're buying you're buying the ability to either buy or sell. And when we're talking about options, stock options, you have either calls or puts. Calls are calls are your ability to purchase the stock at a set price. Um, a put is your ability to sell a stock at a certain price. My whole thing here though is all about the beginner, getting the beginner going and investing, getting the beginner to really get to really get excited about developing an investor mindset, right? And the investor mindset isn't just about investing in the stock market. To me, an investor mindset is about evaluating the best uses of their money, evaluating how to make more money. Um, so you can interchange investor mindset with business mindset. I just choose um, to say investor mindset, right? Because investor mindset, when you have an investment mindset, you're going to look at a business and you're going to look at it in a very different way than you would if you have a consumer mindset. Most people have consumer mindsets. Most people are trained to be consumers. Um, and I just went off on a rant and I'm not sure why. <laughs> so Christ Center for Life, I'm sorry for that. Um, but uh, stock options, okay, I know where I was going. Stock options um, are uh, intermediate level, so I know where I was going. I was saying that stock options are more like intermediate level I stick to the beginner, right? So let's just start getting going. I feel that I could be more helpful in my charge and my ministry, right? As to help beginners to get going, get them on their way. And then, yeah, maybe at some point if I get more more beginners, I'll talk more technical talk and, and more other things, right? But so that's stock options, calls and puts, puts and calls, your ability to buy or sell a stock at a certain price, ETFs. ETFs, I've talked about ETFs a million times uh, on the show, is exchange traded funds. Stands for exchange traded funds. The ETF is like the cousin to the mutual fund. They basically function the same. Like a mutual fund, you can buy a mutual fund that only invests in Chinese companies, or you can buy a mutual fund that only invests in, let's say, gold mining companies. You have the same thing with ETFs, right? You have ETFs that track the Dow, that track the S&P 500, that track the NASDAQ, that track gold miners. Other thing that ETFs do usually is they can buy gold, right? One of the biggest ETFs on the market right now is a, is a ETF that houses gold. All right. Um, you can also buy currency inside of ETFs, right? You can buy the yen, the pound, the Aussie dollar, the Canadian loonie, which is the same thing as the Canadian dollar. Um, you can buy all of those things in ETFs.
if you only wanted to, let's say, invest in water companies, you're going to do that inside of ETFs and some, and some mutual funds as well. But stock options are one thing. ETFs are another. I haven't seen any ETFs that would hold stock options. So they're, they're two different things. They're really like apples and oranges. But um, an ETF typically is passive. So if you say, I believe the stock market is going to do well, and I just want to buy the stock that are in the S&P 500. So you would buy what's called SPY. By the way, none of these are recommendations to buy or sell stock. Before you begin to think about investing, make sure you talk with an investment and or tax advisor. All right. Um, so hopefully I answered your question. Um, Christ Center for Life, feel free to ask me any follow-up questions to go any deeper. I'm here for a little bit longer. And I said I wasn't going to be here that long, but every time y'all get over on me. Um, King Daddy uh, Kivo, how are you? What do I think about Dr. Claude Anderson? I think Dr. Claude Anderson is an absolute G. Um, I do think like his whole build the house model is a little outdated though, but for the most part, 99% of his stuff is accurate. And really the only thing I'm debating on is his model is his, he says like to buy media at like floor five. I'm doing media right now from my home office. So, you know, that's just an updated thing because technology has changed since he wrote his book. So again, he's not wrong. His premise isn't wrong. Um, but I, again, I just think that um, uh, the principles are sound. Um, I, I will say this though. I, I am not, I am not the guy that is against immigrants, especially black immigrants. I love black people, all black people. Um, we all come from Africa. So I'm cool. I'm cool with any and all people that are melanated, that are skin kissed, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, I don't care if they come to the States and quote unquote, pose a risk to jobs. I think that's a piss poor argument to be against immigrants. Um, a lot of people said it about Haitians and, and things like that. Y'all saw what the president said. Y'all see tonight, y'all getting these political and social bars. Um, that's just where I'm at with it, y'all. That's, I'm just giving you how I feel. And listen, y'all get to watch for free. <laughs> um, if I offend anybody, that's not my intention, but these are my thoughts, comments, and concerns. Um, but, you know, y'all saw what Trump said, calling basically all countries, all black countries, shit, all nations like Haiti. But nobody ever talks about the major reason why the United States was able to win the Revolutionary War that was able to help found the states was because the Haitians kicked France's ass. So, um, you know, people don't really study history like that, so. I get it. Look up the Louisiana Purchase. But Haitians for it in the Revolutionary War, if you remember at the time. Matter of fact, I'm mixing, I'm mixing and maxing right now. Um, Haiti or the island of Hispaniola was still controlled by France during the Revolutionary War. France was a United States ally. They wound up sending Haitians over to fight in the Revolutionary War on the United States side. Right? Nobody talks about that. It's talking about black folks, y'all. Right. A lot of times I feel like we get caught up in this whole nationality thing and it does us no good by abiding by some white guys drawing lines. But, you know, again, I, I digress. I ain't going to give you all all my thoughts. <laughs> y'all might not like me. Y'all might say that dude's too radical. <laughs> but um, and then the Louisiana, the Louisiana purchase came a little bit later. And since the Haitians kicked Napoleon, Napoleon's ass. Right. Basically bankrupting France, the United States was able to get the Louisiana purchase on a song and a prayer. Um, so, you know, I don't have those same ideas about black immigration as many others. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, and um, no, I don't look at it as listen. You asked me a question. I'm an open book. Um, so I, I, I would never. So let me let me be uh, succinct here. I don't have the qualifications to judge a Dr. Claude Anderson. I just want to be clear, right? Um, John O'Brien, he's a G2. Um, he's really big on credit and home ownership. I think it's more important for us to get uh, more cash flow and spend more money in our businesses. Um, but again, I think John O'Brien is a G2, and I am in 
no way, shape, form, or fashion in a position to critique of uh, them. He's a, he's an elder. He's out there putting in the work. He's helping people. So, you know, we everybody has a different outlook on things, and I'm cool with that. As long as you don't, like, try to intentionally be slick and steal money and hurt folks, I'm, I'm fine with you. Because, listen, it takes many types. It takes many types. <laughs> okay, so Tycoon Rich, you were talking about a, a tax, ex- tax exempt entity. So you're talking about a 501c3. Um, I don't know what her goal would be to form a 501c3. By the way, um, I want y'all to listen to this. I want y'all to listen to me talking about 501c3s. There's a lot of 501c3s out there. The IRS is cracking down on them. Anytime you do not file within three years consecutively, your 501c3 gets revoked. It gets revoked. Um, And that's because, again, there are so many 501c3s out there and they overlap issues, right? So when you run your 501c3, please do proper bookkeeping. Know that any there is no profit, right? And what I mean by profit, profit for your own personal use. 501c3s can make money, though. Think about the United Way. Think about, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, the United Way. What's the one with, with the drive, with the blood? The blood does the blood drives. Um, Red Cross. Think about Red Cross. They're all nonprofits. They all make money. They all get major donations. Um, but the thing is, a lot of times people wade into 501c3 land or nonprofit land and they really don't understand it's still running a business. You still had to file taxes. You still had to pay people. Um, it still runs like a business. So, you know, so I don't know. Uh, you, you have to ask them what exactly she wants to do. Okay, Mid Atlantic Alex says uh, just getting started on the color of law, but it's eye opening. I didn't realize public housing started off for white people. Of course, it started for white people. <laughs> yes, sir. A lot of them were old military um, buildings. A lot of them were old military buildings or bases. Christ Center for Life says thanks for the answer. My pro- my pleasure. That's what I'm here for. Tycoon Rich One says signing out. Catch you next time. I will see Miss Edith in person, possibly tomorrow. Okay, cool. God bless. Ah, God bless the YouTube as well. And so, uh, Jack the First Three, to shot Loverture is um, the man with the most credit for the Haitian Revolution. Even though there was more, there were more people. Right, a lot of times we like to focus on single individuals. But it was a whole collective of people that fought the Haitian Revolution. And sadly, due to the Haitian Revolution. Um, Haiti bore the wrath of the entire world, um, especially Europe, to pay France this bogus money. But, you know, that's interesting, right? So Haiti had to pay France basically reparations, right? They had to pay reparations for freeing themselves. Slave owners, plantation owners got reparations when the slaves got set free. It's very interesting. Very interesting. All right, so let me go back and see if there are any questions, I'm going to begin to wind down because I've been on for almost two hours. Baby boy, I've been on for a while. All right, so uh, my man Chris C.J. Willis says, Kamari, are you going to the office F-150? No, not yet. But uh, I might get one one day. Ty, Ty Mac, hey Ty. We were talking about um, mental health earlier. I want to shout out Ty Matt, who is a therapist, very dope therapist. Just dope overall person. That's my own girl. I ain't seen you in a while, but I still want to honor your dopeness. All right. So Karan says, what brokerages, what brokerages your actual portfolio in? So Karan, I kind of have money all over the place. I have some money in um, Robinhood. I have some money in Cash App. I use Interactive Broker for some client money. Don't follow what I do on this or this one. Just do what I say. <laughs> Um, Carol Allen, Instagram Monday is earn your leisure and Tuesday is the wall street trapper. I also followed that grace too on IG after August 21st, he's going underground. So see that I even give other folks shout outs. Okay. Shamise says Dave Ramsey is not for me. All right. Well, Shamise, you like to trade. So. 
So Tara said, speaking of Haiti, have you read The Black Jacobians? I think I've heard that title, but no, I have not read that book. Please tell me more. I want to know more. Yeah, absolutely salute to Haiti. Salute the black people all around the world. Um, yeah, please tell me more. Please tell me more. All right, folks. If nobody else has any more questions, hopefully I got oh, wait a minute. I think I missed something. Okay, so Miss Edith said, What should I do with my cake business? But we just got discussed LLC more. So Miss Edith with a cake business, I just say start from scratch. You don't need an LLC. Get the product going, get the stuff going. Get the product going, get the stuff going, get a, get people actually liking your stuff. Um, develop a following, develop raving fans. Uh, that's what I said. I'm about to go off on IG. So that's what I would say. Um, oh, and I told you that. I told you that before. So, yeah, we did talk about that. We talked about that uh, offline. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people, I know a, a lot of people hate the word free, but I say, give your stuff away for free at first. See if the market really wants it. Now, if you already know the market wants it, then get busy, get busy, start selling it, start putting it out there, figure out how to make it better, figure out how to make it palatable for your community and your audience. Uh, wait a minute, you're talking about Yonkers in the Bronx. My family's in the Bronx. I spend a lot of time in the Bronx, in the BX. And if it wasn't for the Bronx, all right, I ain't going to sing to y'all. No more rap lyrics. Uh, so, Carice says, my friend keeps saying if Cash App goes bankrupt, it will lose all my stocks. Worth it. Didn't we talk about that already? We talked about that already, Chris. I think. Who are these friends? Who, who raised these people? Who are they? Who owns Who owns Cash App? I'm trying to get going again. Who owns Cash App? Does anybody know? Can anybody tell me? By the way, does, do do your friends have? Um, do your friends have a, a brokerage account recommendation for you or your friend? Do they have a brokerage account recommendation for you? Because listen, anybody can go bankrupt, even stock brokerage companies. Merrill Lynch can go bankrupt. Well, Merrill Lynch really doesn't even exist anymore because of that very reason. Merrill Lynch got brought out by Bank of America. So what recommendations do they have for you? Let me see if you're still on, if you answer that. Right. You are correct. Square owns Cash App. Anybody know how much Square is worth? Tucson and the San Domingo Revolution. Is that what the Black Jacobians are about? Uh, is that on Audible? I might have checked it out. You about to be my uh, new best friend, Sarah. We can read books. All right. Yes, I, I did. I did. I swear I did. I thought I did, Carice. I, I thought I answered that question a couple weeks ago. I'm almost positive. But listen, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm okay with that. Yes, Karan. Jack Dorsey runs Twitter, and he also runs Square. So does anybody know how much Square is worth? Square going once, going twice, going, 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 going. Uh, let's see. Let's look square. Let's pull up square. I know square is thicker symbol. Is it SQ? Square is trading at $115.90. You don't get to $115.90 per share. Oh, and it jumped 10% today. Lord have mercy. Black Jesus is working his magic. Um, you don't jump 10.4% in a day if you're not strong. But let's 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 dig a little deeper. No, that don't work. That don't work. That's too small. Let's dig a little deeper. Square is a 
50.921B, right? $50.9 billion. That's how much Square is worth, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think a $50 billion company is going out of business anytime soon? Remember, Square owns Cash App. Square owns Cash App. And let's just take a look at how much money they made. So for the year of 2019, Square made $4.7 billion in revenue. That's what they had in sales and profits. Net income was $375 million. $375 million in profits. Now they were they were losing money for quite some time, a little bit of while, but then they flipped the switch. And with everything that's going on with e-commerce, because Square is a major, 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 major um, uh, merchant platform, payment platform, right? Uh, I would say the prospects for the health of their business are still very healthy. But let's go a little bit further, shall we, boys and girls? The balance sheet. Anybody remember what the balance sheet is? So your income sheet is for income sheet is for looking at how much a company made by selling their goods and services over a period of time. The balance sheet then looks at how well the health of a company is, right? By looking at, you can think about it as like a personal statement, personal financial statement, by looking at their net worth, right? Do they have too much debt? Do they have too much assets? What's the deal with them? So Square has $2.2 billion in cash. They ain't broke, y'all. They ain't broke. So they're generating billions in revenue. They're now making a profit that's worth hundreds of millions. Um, the environment right now is ripe for e-commerce. Square makes a lot of money off e-commerce. So what do we think about Square? So do we think Square is going out of business? Now, for right now, though, let's look at this. Square has total total assets of four point five one uh, billion dollars. They only have liabilities of two point eight billion dollars, so they have just as much cash on hand as they have in debt. Sounds cool to me. Sounds cool to me, people. What do y'all think? Sound cool to y'all? Sounds cool to me. Right. So 50 billion. So, Carice, it's, it's, do you think Cash App is going out of business anytime soon? I would venture to say no. My man, Chris, I don't know if he got it from me, but he's doing the daggone thing. I use Cash App for fractional shares to make my own ETFs. Okay, touche. You can, what Chris is saying is instead of buying ETFs, he'll buy, he'll buy some of the pieces of the ETF. You can do that. It's not as, e as efficient, but you can do it. I'm with it. What will happen is the ETF, the returns will be averaged out over what's in the basket where um chris is the way chris is doing it is that he'll get more bang for his buck because he's concentrating only in a few only in a few so carice ask ask your friend right ask your friend why he says that can a solo pador file for government loans yes you have sole proprietors sole proprietors are getting eidl loans by the way most people that are saying they're llc's are actually treated by the IRS as sole proprietors. Did anybody know that? Did anybody know that? Listen, Miss Edith, um, I appreciate you. You're here, but listen, you're asking me what should you do? I say go for it if you want to. Because you asked what should you do with your cake business? So listen, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to give you a lawyer response. A lawyers, I talk to them all the time. I argue with them all the time. They're probably going to tell you to form an LLC. My point, though, is, and, and I guess maybe I'm conditioned, but I've run into so many people that form LLCs based on somebody's bogus advice that they form an LLC. They don't recognize what they're getting into. 
And then they're like, oh, I have to pay all this money. Yeah, but you didn't do the research. And you're still going to be treated like a sole proprietor at the IRS level. Now, the whole point of having an LLC is to protect your assets from being sued, to protect your life, to protect from life, to protect, excuse me, li it's liability protection. I'm sorry, everybody. It's liability protection. Um, so, you know, if you, if you think, and I'm not trying to be funny here, I'm being honest, but if you think if somebody might claim they're going to get food poisoning from your cakes, then yeah, you might want to get an LLC or you might want to get a lot of umbrella insurance to protect from that. I don't, I don't know what you have to protect, but I listen, I say, get started, just get started, get started tomorrow. You don't need no sticking paperwork. You already have the right to do it. Bake a cake, sell it. We get hung up on these technicals about paperwork, but the paperwork matters. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But what's more important is, is that you get going, in my opinion. All right, I'm just looking back to see if uh, if I missed anything. Yes, yeah, spender's disease. Spender's disease is real. Listen, 70% of the U.S. GDP, which stands for gross domestic, gross domestic product, which is a measure of the U.S. economy, 70% of U.S. GDP comes from personal spending. They want people to spend. Part of the reason why my name is the finance problem is because you have to rebel against traditional finance, traditional money logic, traditional all this thought. You know, most of it is for people that, you know, had pensions many, many years ago, and we're seeing the way that pensions are going. Pensions are not really here. Miss Ohai, how are you? Thank you for joining. To Brooklyn, how are you? Thanks for joining. All right, so I'm just trying to catch up, make sure I didn't miss any questions. I've been on with y'all for two hours. I must like y'all a little bit. Just a little bit. I must like y'all. Okay, I have about 15 shares brought at 35 LOL per share. What what do you have brought, Karan? What did you buy? Come on, share. I share. All right, so you're good now, Chris. All right, well, you know. Is your friend investing with you? I don't know what that is. Are right, you good? Is your friend in trading investing? Do y'all talk about stocks? Um, I don't, you know, I get going and I'll start asking questions. I'll be asking too many questions. Okay, you guys square. My man at 35. Damn, can I borrow a dollar? <laughs> you over there rich, rich, bro, bro. <laughs> Help me out. Let me borrow something. Let me hold something. No, that's what's up, man. That's that's great. I mean, I don't know how long you've been buying it, but and I ain't trying to count your pockets. I just do math instinctively in my head. <laughs> but you said 35, you put it out there, and it's at 115. Oh, you got about 35. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got about 35. Leo Lady's back. How are you? So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right. So, last question. I'm out. I'm hungry. I ain't had no vittles. I ain't had no food. And I got to get up early in the morning. Oh, okay, so she invests with her husband and they just start. <laughs> That's good. Y'all should form an investment club together. Oh, you know what? I do see a question over on IG. How do I file taxes as a first-time hairstylist? You come to me, you pay me, I do your taxes for you. I submit them to the IRS in the state where you reside. You'll be happy because the work will be good. Uh, and you go on your merry way. But seriously, um, uh, I would, I think I sent you the video I did about hairstylists and barbers. Um, but one of the things I would do is start keeping track of your records, right? To have great books. The biggest flaw 
of um, new business startups is they create terrible books. Many times, uh, many times, many times they uh, they overpay in taxes or they don't get all their tax benefits because their book even sucks. I, I can't think of any other way to say it. But you know, keep books. All bookkeeping is right is is categorizing and organizing what money comes in, right to your business, the money you charge your clients to do the hair. I don't know if you're doing perms, colors, extensions, um, braids, twists, locks, natural hair, um, or, or um, wigs, right? Um, all of them spend, depending on what you're doing, the money for that. If you have any products, right? If you're selling any products, that all gets categorized as income, sales, or revenue, right? Then you have to keep track of what you pay for your products, what you might have paid if you had booth rent or um, if you're renting a shop, um, any insurance you might have, any products you might buy, any advertisements you may do. I'm kind of giving you the blueprint right here. I hope you appreciate it. Uh, keep track of those. You subtract your expenses from your revenue or your sales. That's your profit. You just pay tax on your profit. Other thing, new stylists, new, new business owners need to do. And I'm assuming that you are a business owner. Because there are some stylists who are employed, especially some of these big corporations, um, like Nappy Cuts. <laughs> but that's a joke, y'all. Um, but uh, you want to think about doing quarterly quarterly estimated payments as well. The IRS wants you to do them, um, so that you don't owe a whole big pile of money at the end of the year when you start paying on taxes. Or when taxes to do. Uh, Karan, what are you saying, bro? About what I do? What I do? This light is super bright. I don't know why. I don't know why. I almost need to turn it off. Uh, so what? What I say, bro? <laughs> Am I coming to the office? Um, I gotta come down there and pick up some mail. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I got to come down here at some point, but yeah, we got to connect. We got to connect. I hope I answered your question and uh, mid Atlantic. All right. Thank you for the problem. Thank you for being here. Uh, mid Atlantic. I'm going to jump off, but now you if you need help with your taxes, I'm your guy. I can help you out. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, I'm also your guy too. I'm here for it all. I'm here to help. So folks again. All right. I think now you got the last question. I think no more. Mr. Robert Lewis, Mr. Lenny USA. Everybody go follow Lenny USA. I, I, I think I talked about you. I know you were on a little bit earlier. Somebody literally asked me the same question you asked me about um, the CARES Act and the ability to pull out $100,000. Did you pay them to come over and do that? <laughs> Ray prior to four or five, are you? Thanks for joining. All right, guys. I've been on for two hours, 13 minutes, and 13 seconds. It's a long time. I guess I really do like y'all. Ms. Carroll, I can do I can do taxes all over the country and many of the protected territories. <laughs> I've never had anybody in protected territory uh, do their taxes, though. But yes, 350, 357 King, how are you? All right, CJ, I will see you soon. Talk to you soon. Everybody, I'm going to get some food. I have not eaten. It's uh, 10 15 in my neck of the woods. I'll be back here next Wednesday at 8 p.m. So set your clock, set your alarms. I'll be back here. Same Rebel time, same Rebel channel, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, do me a favor, everybody. Trying to grow my YouTube channel. It's kind of hard, though. It's kind of hard. I'm trying to put this. I think I do a good job. Y'all tell me I do a good job unless y'all lying to me. But I'm trying to help more people. I'm trying to, uh, to you know, spread this money around so we can get more money, right? So listen, do me a favor. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share my YouTube channel. Invite your friends to my YouTube channel. And I would, I would be forever, ever grateful. Appreciative. I appreciate y'all. And if y'all have any questions about money, stocks, taxes, business insurance, text it to me in between time. I might be able to answer your question through text. Don't call me. I'm not going to answer. I'm just telling you that now. 
Um, I get so many sales calls. It's like freaking ridiculous. If somebody else tries to sell me a car warranty again, I'm going to pull my eyebrow here because I ain't got nothing on the top of my head. But they're killing me, y'all. They're killing me. But text me 484-278-1357. Again, 484-278-1357. And I will see you all. Y'all know I'll be back on Saturday with the Wealthy Conversation. Not sure we're through this week yet, though. So I will figure it out. But I will see you all soon. Have a great night, everybody. So long.